We are here in the nation's capital tonight to honor a former president, George H.W. Bush. He made his final trip to Washington late this afternoon, and a powerful and moving sight it was. With the sun setting as his coffin was carried up the steps of the Capitol, his son George W. Bush and Laura Bush, you could see the pain on their faces and the rest of the Bush family. And at this hour, a look inside the rotunda where the former president now lies in state as Americans and lawmakers from both parties line up to pay their respects to the last president of the greatest generation. A man, a leader who admitted to mistakes, but who hoped that people would remember the good things they are remembering tonight. A devoted family man, a man who served his country. This morning, the family of President George Herbert Walker Bush standing over his casket, draped in an American flag. The president's dog, Sully, right there too. The remains of America's longest living president were then carried out by members of the Secret Service in Houston. The motorcade on its way to Ellington Field Joint Reserve Base, where Air Force One was waiting, sent by President Trump, dubbed Special Air Mission 41. Families and children lining up to say goodbye. Former President George W. Bush and his wife Laura, their hands to their hearts, then the family boarding too, away from the former president and first lady. Arriving in Washington late this afternoon, Navy sailors from the USS George H.W. Bush standing at attention. The motorcade traveled to the U.S. Capitol, where members of the former president's cabinet were waiting. With the sun low in the sky, a beautiful sunset. George W. Bush and Laura Bush waiting atop the steps of the Capitol, and you could read her lips, the former First Lady saying, what a beautiful night to the former president. And then a 21-gun salute. The casket was then carried up the steps to the rotunda. Ready, step. The emotions of a son and former president, you could see it as he watched his father return to Washington. Inside, the casket was placed on the Lincoln catafalque, the same stand that once held President Abraham Lincoln's coffin. And tonight, President Trump paying his respects here as well, along with so many others. It was a long and remarkable journey for President Bush, the boy from Milton, Massachusetts, born in 1924, the son of a banker and a senator. He would later meet the love of his life, Barbara Pierce, at a Christmas dance. He was the first boy she would kiss. The following year, George enlisted in the Navy on his 18th birthday. While overseas, he would write to Barbara, his darling bar. Two years in, on his 50th mission, he was shot down over the Pacific. He was rescued, and he made it home to Barbara. They would have six children, and among them a little girl named Robin, who died of leukemia at three. It was a loss that broke both of them. He was very close. I was very close to her. Um, she adored him. What was it that pulled you back up on your feet afterwards? He was very strong then. He was wonderful. From the oil business to politics, he was a congressman, an ambassador, a CIA director, and a loyal vice president to Ronald Reagan. He would then get his own chance. I want a kinder and gentler nation. <laughs> As president guiding the country through the end of the Cold War and driving Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait, but with the economy at home being tested, he would lose re-election to Bill Clinton, describing the loss to Diane Sawyer. I just had a great feeling of letting down a lot of people, a lot of people that worked for me. You have this ghastly feeling, you let them down, and then you get over it, and you go on with your life. But he would leave a letter in the Oval Office for Bill Clinton, writing, I wish your family well. Your success is now our country's success. I'm rooting hard for you. He would later build an unlikely friendship with Bill Clinton, and they would raise money for the victims of the tsunami and here at home after Katrina. President Bush and his wife Barbara were married 73 years, the longest of any president and first lady, and we would learn he held her hand until the end. He lost her just eight months ago. At her funeral, the Clintons, the Obamas, and first lady Melania Trump, and Barbara Bush revealing along the way how she wanted her husband to be remembered. He is the most decent, honorable, wonderful. Nobody's ever been as lucky as I've been. I want people to remember him as courageous. I want 
them to remember him as he is. It was less than a year ago he sat before his wife. There was sadness, but not fear, as he once told Diane. I do think that, that you go to heaven, there is a heaven, and uh, I don't fear it, though. When I was a little guy, I'd fear death. I'd be I'd worried about it, be scared. Not anymore. Not fearing death in the end. And what he said when he was asked who he wanted to see in heaven. That's coming up a bit later here. And one more point in image tonight. President Bush's service dog. You saw Sully in front of the coffin today. The Labrador, we learned tonight, he boarded that flight to Washington as well. He will return to service soon at Walter Reed Medical Center, where he will continue to serve veterans just as he was so loyal to his president. And as we reported there, President Trump sending Air Force One and he and the First Lady Melania Trump will attend the funeral at the National Cathedral on Wednesday. Presidents Carter, Clinton and Obama will all be there as well. I want to bring in ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, live tonight. And John, we know there had been tension when Donald Trump was running for office, what was said about the Bushes. But John, this really is a moment of unity here in Washington. It sure is, David. The president and the first lady going to the Capitol to pay respects to the former president tonight. And on Wednesday at the funeral service will be the first time that we see all of the living presidents together since the inauguration of Donald Trump, a moment of unity befitting of the former president. George H.W. Bush known for striking up genuine friendships with his former rivals. In the case of the Trumps, the bitterness ran both ways. Of course, Trump, one of the harshest critics out there of the Bush family, but George H.W. Bush actually crossed party lines and voted for Hillary Clinton. He so resented what Trump said about his family. When it came time for President Trump to be inaugurated, though, George Bush wrote him a letter saying, I want you to know I wish you the very best as you begin this incredible journey of leading our great country. David. All right, John Carl across town at the White House tonight. John, thank you. And before we move on, we do want to let you know that the state funeral that will be held Wednesday morning at the National Cathedral, of course, we will carry it live right here on ABC Wednesday morning. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.